Hello everyone, welcome back to Now I Know. I am Rupal and today we are talking about gametogenesis that is the formation of gametes. In this video we will talk about spermatogenesis and in the next video we will cover oogenesis. So let's begin. So first things first, what is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is nothing but formation of gametes. So in case of male it will be sperm and in case of female it will be ovum okay sometimes i know that we use the word egg over here but in case of female human female reproduction egg is the term that we talk only after fertilization before fertilization we will refer to it as ovum so formation of sperm is what we call spermatogenesis and formation of ovum is oogenesis just couple more uh, brief points over here from where these gametes are produced they are produced from germ cells again we have talked about somatic cells and germ cells in one of the previous video briefly over here germ cells are diploid they can undergo meiosis to produce haploid gametes okay so the uh, gametes will be produced from germ cells and we will see what germ cells what we call it as so let's begin with the spermatogenesis in this video so what is spermatogenesis simple definition is formation of sperm and what is the location where does this happen it occurs in seminiferous tubule where are they present in testes okay so spermatogenesis a formation of sperm location seminiferous tubules in testes in male now let's see what happens how exactly the formation of sperm occurs i'm going to show you the uh, seminiferous tubule this is lined with germ cell this is the germinal epithelium okay in the seminiferous tubule and at a time we'll just talk about one germ cell so it's easy for us to imagine what happens so let's say for example i take this one germ cell this is the germinal epithelium and these germ cells are 2n they are diploid now the first stage of spermatogenesis or the first step that happens is this germ cell will simply multiply and become more in number so mitosis will occur and what happens at the end of mitosis you get two daughter cells with same genetic material as the mother cell so that means these are also 2n again multiplication simple mitosis you get more 2n cell they all are same in shape okay this is not a proper drawing so from this one germ cell over here in the seminiferous tubule the germinal uh, epithelium we had one germ cell that multiplied and made more of these uh, diploid germ cell and this is what we are going to call as spermatogonia spermatogonia this is still 2n it is still diploid right because only mitosis has occurred so this is the first stage of spermatogenesis that is multiplication stage the germ cell that is present in the seminiferous tubule is just undergoing mitosis to produce more and more of uh, copies of spermatogonia now because it is mitosis as i said they are still diploid now what happens is let's say for example this one uh, germ cell has divided it's, it's not only one there will be many but let's say for example they have divided and all of these now undergo meiosis and form haploid what will happen we don't have any more of spermatogonia left to make more sperm right so there has to be some kind of a backup and that will happen by preserving some of the cells and just serving them as stem cells that means not all the cells will undergo meiosis to form the haploid sperm some cells will remain as stem cell and they will just renew themselves that means they will just undergo mitosis to make sure that they are not depleted make sense it's just backup for body to make sure that they don't run out of spermatogonia 
So these cells, which will act like stem cell, that means they will just multiply and make sure that they are maintained in number. And because they have to maintain in number, same as it is, they will undergo mitosis. These cells are called type 1 spermatogonia. Okay, type 1 spermatogonia are the stem cells or the spermatogonial stem cells that will divide only mitotically to make sure that they are enough in number. While these other spermatogonia that will now proceed to form the sperms that means they will undergo meiosis and these are called type 2 spermatogonia. Now let's move from this particular phase. So now this type 2 spermatogonia will enter the next phase that is called growth phase okay what happens in growth phase they will accumulate nutrients and become bigger in size it is still two and it is still deployed okay it is just it has entered the second phase this over here the primary one it is undergoing mitosis to make sure that it is not depleted so that is not entering the uh, process of spermatogenesis but the type 2 spermatogonia will enter the next stage that is the growth phase in growth phase what it does it will accumulate all the nutrients and grow in size still there is no change with the dna or the genetic material it is still deployed now this particular cell which is in the growth phase all this uh, type 2 spermatogonia they have accumulated nutrients and become larger in size size this is called as primary spermatocytes okay it is still 2n in number because nothing else has happened so far they have just entered the next phase where they have accumulated nutrients they have uh, become larger in size and now this one is called primary spermatocytes now this primary some spermatocytes will enter the meiosis the next stage is meiosis so i will just draw primary spermatocyte here this primary spermatocyte site will undergo meiosis first will be meiosis 1 i hope we all clear about are clear about meiosis 1 and 2 at this point if not go back and watch my video on meiosis it will help so first will be meiosis 1 where the me meiotic division that means a reduction division occurs this primary spermatocyte is, uh, site is 2 and deployed meiosis 1 is a reduction division that means the two daughter cells they are produce are haploid okay i hope it makes sense now these haploid daughter cells that are produced are called secondary spermatocyte easy not difficult see uh, you had the spermatogonia that is the type uh, b spermatogonia that has undergone the growth phase that is called primary spermatocytes this primary spermatocyte will now undergo meiosis and meiosis one first will occur that is a reduction division that means two daughter cells are produced but it was reduction division that means both the daughter cells are haploid and this is called uh, secondary spermatocytes easy now what happens obviously there will be meiosis 2 and in meiosis 2 what happens it is just similar to mitotic division that means exactly whatever is the daughter cell it will divide so both the daughter cells will produce two more daughter cells and they are also haploid now this after primary uh, spermatocyte we had secondary spermatocyte right but after the second division whatever is produced these four cells they are called spermatids they are not sperm cells yet you know they, they don't even look like sperm cells yet isn't it so these four are called spermatids so what are sperm uh, spermatids they are circular they are haploid and they are non-motile because they don't have the tail and the machinery to be motile yet okay so they are circular they are haploid and they are non-motile now this spermatids will undergo the uh, certain changes in order to become mature sperm and that process from spermatids to formation of mature sperm is called spermiogenesis 
spermiogenesis. The complete process from germ cell to mature sperm, we call it as spermatogenesis. But in specific, from spermated to mature sperm cell is called spermiogenesis. So spermiogenesis is part of spermatogenesis process. Right, it is just one of the stages in spermatogenesis. I hope I am clear and it is not confusing. So what happens now? Let's now take these four spermatids over here and see what happens. Spermatids are haploid. Now we know they are circular and non-motile. So these are spermatids. Now these will undergo certain changes to become mature sperm. And this process from spermated to sperm is called spermiogenesis. So each sperm is again haploid and they have 23 chromosome, right? We know that sperm contributes 23 chromosome and ovum will get con uh, contribute 23 chromosome and that's how the egg fertilized egg will get 46 chromosomes. So sperm is 23 chromosome at the end of the process of spermatogenesis you get sperm those are haploid that means they have 23 chromosomes. Now what all are the changes that happens from spermatids to become sperm just briefly. The first thing just I will I'll just mention uh, the important changes. So in the spermiogenesis process that means formation of sperm from spermatids the first important change that happens is condensation of nucleus and that happens by losing the mRNA and acidic protein. So it will lose the mRNA and acidic protein. So what is left? Only DNA and basic proteins. That is how the nucleus is condensed. The next would be change in the shape of the nucleus. Now you, you might remember the whole shape of the sperm, right? Not so good with drawing, but I hope you understand. It's oval and flat on the surface. Okay. Next, the structure of the sperm will be covered with plasma membrane. The next change is the Golgi complex will be break into two part. The one part that will be bigger part, the smaller part will be degraded, but the bigger part will become acrosome. And this acrosome is what contains the digestive enzymes that helps the sperm to penetrate the egg. Okay, so the acrosome has the enzymes, digestive enzyme that will help it to penetrate the egg. Next is change in the mitochondria, it will become spiral. It will be ribbon like structure spiral and this uh, this will be in mid piece it gives energy for the motility and the last change would be the cytoplasmic content the cytoplasmic content will be lost we know that sperm doesn't contribute it doesn't contribute cytoplasm it's only it, it only contributes genetic material that's because it doesn't have the cytoplasmic content in the head region of the sperm there is very little thin layer of cytoplasm in the tail but anyways that's not going to get uh, uh, that's not going to fuse with the uh, ovum anyways so the cytoplasmic content will be lost so at the end you know once all these changes occur what happens these changes are occurring, all the changes are occurring at the level of, you know, spermatids. When the spermatids are made, all these changes will occur and we will get mature sperms. And as I said, these uh, changes, the process is called spermiogenesis. Now, these mature sperm cells that are made, they will be embedded in the folds of Sertoli cells and from there they need to be released. Okay, you might have seen in the diagram it will be embedded like this. So they are not freely available uh, at this particular point when they are produced the mature sperms are made they are embedded in the folds of Sertoli cells and once they are released from these uh, folds they will be released in the lumen of seminiferous tubules. What do I mean by lumen? it's just the inner space okay so something like this if it is 
very very crude diagram i'm showing they will be released in the lumen of seminiferous tubule okay and this happens only when the mature sperm cells are present okay only in the uh, after the puberty this whole process will occur the formation of mature sperm so it will be released in the lumen of seminiferous tubule and this uh, release you know the release of this mature sperm cell from this fold in the lumen of seminiferous tubule this particular release is called spermiation i know many terms no so what is spermiation simple definition is release of mature sperms where are they getting released from from sertoli cells now we know these are haploid they have tail they are motile and the shape you might have learned or maybe in future we will learn head mid piece and tail so these are the mature sperm cells okay let me just give you a compressed one over here just going to give you an overview very easy to understand we talked about the germ cells in the seminiferous tubule let's just take one simple germ cell for our easy understanding that will multiply there will be first multiplication stage and this one germ cell will mitotically divide to make two daughter cells this germ cell is 2n in number mitosis so again it gives diploid daughter cells once again we will see this this is still just the multiplication phase now these cells that are uh, produced at the end of this multiplication is called spermatogonia out of this spermatogonia some will remain as stem cells and they will just keep on dividing mitotically and they are called type 1 spermatogonia and these cells will now enter the next stage they are called type 2 spermatogonia don't forget they are still diploid what is the next stage the growth stage growth stage what will happen they will accumulate nutrient and become larger in size so growth phase any genetic material difference no it is still 2n now this particular cell that has become larger in size this is what we call primary spermatocyte this will undergo meiosis 1 and produce two daughter cell meiosis 1 is reduction division so it will make two daughter cells but now the genetic material is half so they are haploid and these are called secondary spermatocyte now each of these will undergo meiosis 2 meiosis 2 is nothing but just like mitosis so just the copies of the mother cell will be made anyways they are haploid so it will be haploid only now these cells at the end of meiosis 2 are called spermatids right they are haploid they are circular they are non motile now this spermatids will undergo changes to become mature sperms and this process from spermatids to mature sperms is called spermiogenesis but the mature cells that are produced they are still embedded so now they have to be released from the sertoli cell in the lumen of seminiferous tubules and that release is called spermiation so this is you know this this is the gist of the spermatogenesis it's easy to understand just go through it once make your notes if needed pause it go back and you know watch it again it will be easy to understand so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful and it was not so confusing if you still have any doubt you can ask me in the comments or ask me on um, uh, you can dm me in my instagram if you like this video give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and switch on the bell so whenever i upload a new video you will get notified so that's all for now i'll see you next time until then keep learning